Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. We've got his partner in crime, the Nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks. Good to see you. We've got putting in the reps, Taria Harris. Taria, how are you? I'm well. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are things? I'm feeling good. Great. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. How are things, Tate? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Excited to be good here. Good to see you. And of course, last but not least, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great, how are you? I feel great because based on the last boot camp, we have a plethora, and I love saying the word plethora, of roundtable topics that we can discuss. And this week's roundtable, we have two distinct topics. So the first question I'm gonna ask, and we are going to start with Eric Peterson, is Eric, how do your VAs charge you for posting ads, say on Facebook, Craigslist, landmoto.com? Do they charge you hourly? Or they charge you per ad? And what do you recommend to your coaching clients? So um, it does depend on the platform. Um, Facebook, Landmoto, other land selling websites, those are gonna be hourly uh, in terms of how we pay. Uh, Craigslist is going to be by the stuck ad as opposed to hourly. Um, so the reason for that, you know, Facebook and, and the other land selling websites, um, you know, it, it's really just the time it takes to, to get those ads out. And in, in the case of Facebook, maybe your poster is also responding to leads. And, and that's really an hourly task, in my opinion. Um, but when we start talking about Craigslist, um, it's not really effective to pay by time because number one, we want to encourage lots of speed. Um, but number two, some of those ads that they post are non-productive, uh, mainly because they don't stick or they flagged. Um, so as you know, the buyer of, of the person's time that's doing that work, I want them to post successful ads and that's what I want to pay for. So we kind of build our pay structure around that. That's kind of our incentive. If you get a stuck ad, it's X amount of dollars per stuck ad or X amount of cents per stuck ad. And that's the difference between the two platforms for us. I, 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 it makes a lot of sense to me. I have a feeling maybe Tate Litchfield does something differently. Tate, how do, you, how do your VAs charge you? Um, I just, Ditto what Eric does. I mean, this is uh, Craigslist is one of those areas where you, it's a performance based, right? So if you're really good at getting ads to stick, you're compensated accordingly. The other reason I like doing it this way is I've got one VA who has a terrible stick rate, but it doesn't matter to me, right? Because I only pay him $10 a day because he's only paid to get 10 new ads posted every single day. So that works really well for us. Um, Facebook and Landmoto, it's uh, an hourly thing just because Landmoto is super simple. I mean, anybody that can fog a mirror can post on Landmoto, and I think that's the way Scott designed it. And, you know, Facebook, it's the same thing, but we just have a, a kind of a, a schedule or protocol that we follow based on profiles and when it's time to post and renew and that kind of thing. So very similar approach to Eric. Um, I think it's what we found to work best for our individual businesses. Okay, so so far we're in total compensation harmony. alignment. Total but harmony. Taria, putting in the reps, Harris, what are you doing? Uh, so Craigslist is identical. We pay per stuck ad, um, and that, that's just a smart way to do it for us as well. Um, Facebook, we have both. 
So I have someone who posts hourly because she posts, but she also does a lot of the responding as well. And then we have someone who is paid um, weekly to post on all our platforms. Now we determine what gets posted and you know how many on each platform. So we still structure what needs to be done, but it's a weekly payment we give for all the platforms that we're currently posting on, including okay. deal of the week. Including deal of the week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Eric and Tate, do you guys pay the same people for, for your email for the deal of the week? My deal of the week team gets paid hourly. Uh, it's yeah. separate hourly. people that, uh, that manage that process for us. I could see Tate paying by open rate. I was <laughs> actually just looking at my open rate this today and I was thinking, what can I do to improve this? And I'm, I was actually boxing uh, the VA this morning to get, we need to rework this because our open rate is not where I want it to be. It makes some changes. That's a good idea, Mark. Maybe a little it's tiny bonus bad. there. Right? Bonus. Yeah. You've seen yeah. that you've seen that, um, like that that old commercial where it's like tiny bonus day where it's like, oh, it's what whatever day. I got five dollar bonus. Right. I'm thinking about implementing something like that. If we can get X percentage open rate, yeah, I'll give you a nice little bonus. We do uh, compensate when they sell and that kind of thing as well. So but right. uh for deal of the week it's just that flat rate is what we pay. I think we're paying like four dollars an hour for that position super simple okay great the nightcap og dude buddy scott bossman are you in alignment with your other coaches yeah pretty much uh, we have a marketing manager that we pay weekly a weekly salary and he kind of oversees facebook posting uh our other uh you know land moto land flip land century uh deal of the week. Uh, he, he does those emails as well. And then he manages one other Facebook ad poster for us um, because we like to keep our properties separate in different Facebook accounts. So he's managing which ads are being placed in which account. So he's being paid weekly uh, on a salary basis. What, what, what's that look uh, for? Mike Zeno, are you confused by this? He says a marketing manager. When I hear manager, I think he's managing the team that posts the ads, but it sounds like he's, he's the one that's doing the work. He's a, he's a little bit of both. He's got kind of a hybrid such, so I shouldn't say manager, right? He's kind of managing one person. So um, we're kind of like, you know, How about especially? I thought you were looking at because he had a new strategy with like a Facebook account per property. I wanted to hear more about that. I thought that's when you started making that face, but I was confused. I like that. You got to talk more about your strategy. And that, I mean, whether he's the manager or, you know, he's kind of the manager. He's, he's managing the whole thing. I mean, it's a terminology thing. Okay. He's a working manager. There's nothing. Yeah. The working that. manager. Precision of language matters on this podcast. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds expensive. So we, but, uh, we need to be nah. clear. So he's a specialist um, or a manager? <laughs> he's a specialist. Let's he's do a specialist. That. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. So that's so he, but he so does. But he does, he does manage one person. Yes, correct. So then that's fair. That's fair. He's a. He's a supervisor. He's, well, I mean, you no. Know, yeah, because the one person, but know, he's doing the most of the ads. On on the fire department, I'm a lieutenant, but I'm I'm a I'm a working supervisor. So I get the I get where he's going with that. I think there is such a thing. This is what happens when you don't work in corporate America for too long. You just don't know what anyone does with their titles. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, but it's, you know, it, though, I think it's fun to stir the pot with Scott Bossman. So, and I like to see Mike Zeno That's coming fun. to his, his That's rescue. That's so nice of him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is a working supervisor. I think it's uh, like Taria said, that's a, that's a, it's a valid term. There you go. <laughs> so Mike, in, in what ambitiously lazy way do you, work with your VAs to do your marketing? I'm in alignment with what's been said so far. We have the hourly rate for all of the posting except for Craigslist because there's such variability in um, getting the ads to stick and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know much else to add. You know, 
I, I I guess I I guess I like going like first bet mark. I guess uh, going last now. It's like everybody. I, I'm feeling the pain of being last now. I, I guess I can't be satisfied, right? Because now like all these wonderful things have been said. Yeah. Um, we still have to hear from Scott Todd, so I know we'll have that. But uh, you know, yeah, hourly hourly pay for the uh, for the marketing team uh, manager supervisor uh and um you know uh, per ad with the uh, craigslist so and uh no much else to add to that i'm not really loving this spot on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> so hard okay well, well we'll circle back on the next question first to you mike <laughs> there you go it'll get boomerang right back but scott todd you're gonna be the anchor on this how do you handle? How do you work with your VAs, charging them for for ad posting? Yeah, so you know Craigslist, you got it. You know, uh, pay pay per ad stuck, right? Like that, you're paying for result because Craigslist is finicky, and you know they take them down whenever they want and whatever. Everybody else kind of falls within that hourly range, right? Like I don't really pay for results. I do like the the concept that Tate was saying, like pay for uh, an open rate to someone blasting out the email, but um, I don't do that today. It's a good idea, but maybe a bonus for someone like that. Anything above 10%, 12%, 20%? What, what, what would you bonus that? What, what's, a, what's an outstanding open rate? Well, I mean, I think that I think it's about growth, right? You know, like I think that you've got to look at what your baseline is today and then grow it. So, hey, listen, if you, you know, if you get the open rate to, you know, 10% higher or the click rate, right? You got to figure out which one of those metrics is important to you. Is it the open rate? To me, the open rate is garbage. Why? Because the open rate just means that they open, they didn't do anything with it. The click rate to me is more important. Okay. So like figure out your baseline and then figure out what you want to improve it for. Like, hey, 10, you know, 10% better. I want, look at your average and say, I want it better than this. But you know, really, what it comes down to on that open rate mark is very simple. It's it's the it's the headline, like the open rate is the headline, and then the click rate is the offer, right? Like, if you're not getting that click rate, one, they didn't open it, and two, like they didn't take action on it because your offer is not good. It's not connecting with people. So you can pull a lot of data out of just those two metrics, like what people are thinking about what you just put out there. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So Tate, you got to do the. Yeah, it's not just it's open plus click, right? So they got to really work on that headline plus the call to action to get any any bonus. For sure. Yeah, and I was going to say you got to know what your baseline is. So whatever you're you're achieving currently, you got to figure out how much you want to double that or triple that percentage. And, go accordingly but i'm with scott really it's about the clicks yeah i i do think there is a general metric overall which i think if you get a 10 percent or above open rate it's really good now i don't know necessarily in what it is in our niche because i know people have a much higher open rate um i'd imagine the click-through rate is around two percent i think generally wow. but i could be wrong i have to go to the googles and the interwebs and get some updated information. Scott Todd's making that face. Like, Mark, you have no idea what you're talking about. I think it was because you said interweb. <laughs> no, he said the Googles, and that's like, that's the Googles. I mean, we just literally, I just have a feeling like if you were to look at our audience retention graph right there when he said the Googles, everybody just like plugged out. Uh, All right. <laughs> you know, for your, for your people, Scott, I should have said Bing. For the people that are on Bing, they can do a what, really what nice is, search. What is Bing? I don't even know what that is. What are you? What your surface you does. Your surface yeah. never being. Oh, my surface yeah, that's what does comes on that surface. That's right. <laughs> that's that, surface. that's baked in there, baby. <laughs> the the so, surface uh, does not know that. Well, let's go to our second question, which is if you have multiple properties, do you need to post three ads per each property? So, for example, you have, let's say, 10 properties that are in, let's say, in, in the same county, would you post three ads per unique APN number? Mike Zeno? Well, thank what you for you asking, Mark. Um, 
No, and I'm glad you said that because we tend to hyper-focus, right? We go to specific areas. So the idea is to generate leads, right? That they can later on warm up to you and buy from you. So no, not I don't for uh, every, say I had 10 properties, there wouldn't be three times 10. I just want to make sure that there's enough ads going out to generate leads for that area where my properties are located. So um, I don't think that you have to get that detailed where you're throwing out specific ads on, you know, the thing is that we're looking for leads. Uh, we're going to talk to the people, we're gonna, you know, and if in the course of discussions, you know, you have a property that might better match them, you could talk to them about it. But uh, the short answer for me would be no. But no. Scott Bossman? Uh, I'd say no as well. Um, you know, I think the, the platform you're marketing on too may have some limits as to how much you're posting, uh, that type of thing. So, uh, now Zeno's laughing at me. I don't even say anything wrong. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <Right at him. laughs> so, uh, let's say we have three properties in rotation. Um, just to keep it real simple. I mean, we're posting on Facebook. Let's say we're posting property A today, A today, B tomorrow, C the next day. And then we'll, we'll repeat, rinse and repeat after that. If we have some very similar properties, or let's say let's say we have one property, I'm still going to hit Facebook every single day, but we're going to change the ad contact and change the the title, the cover picture, all that stuff. You can do a short form ad today and long form ad tomorrow. It's just all about showing up on that platform. The the other land selling platforms are nice because you can kind of set it and forget it, and then maybe renew a week later that type of thing. So that's that's what we do. All right, Tree Harris. So very similar um, on the other platforms outside of, you know, Facebook, Craigslist, we post every time we get a new property, we throw it up there and we just kind of monitor it from there. So we do have a specific ad for each property on those platforms. On Facebook, we typically try to just post geographically. So if we, we want to make sure we've covered all of our property in this area, which could be one ad that covers all of them. And as our leads come in, we funnel them to the property that best fits them in that area. So not so much specific for each property, but mostly for each geographical area. Makes sense. Eric Peterson, what about you? Well, I think um, kind of like everyone said, you know, the, the land selling platforms, we're gonna make sure we have an ad on all those platforms that represent the type of properties we have. So if we're talking 10 properties in one county, Maybe there's three different types of properties within those 10, you know, maybe there's a, a few five acres that are in one area, maybe there's some one acres in another area, etc. So we're going to represent one of each of those on those land selling platforms. Uh, Craigslist, um, you know, with 10 properties, we're probably going to go ahead and, and be posting let's say 10 to 15 ads a day in multiple markets. Uh, to represent those properties. On Facebook, um, it's gonna, first of all, depend how many accounts we have access to. But again, we wanna, you know, hit those markets where we wanna advertise these properties on a regular basis. For Facebook, we can't put out the quantity of ads that we're gonna put out on Craigslist um, unless we're gonna have like 20 accounts or something. So it's, it's scaled back a little bit, but we're still gonna, try to get a couple ads out a day and again, represent what we have in inventory and bring in those leads and, you know, work them. Fantastic. Tate Litchfield, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we're just trying to get as many ads posted as humanly possible. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do. We do a variety. Um, it's not like we're sitting there writing ad copy for the same property a hundred times over. We try to recycle it, we try to change it up, we try to alter it and make it unique. Uh, little tweaks here and there can go a long way. But Facebook, you know, same as pretty much everybody else, I, just due to limitations, I can't get as any ads posted as I would love. Uh, Craigslist, it's all about posting a variety of property, different headlines, different images, even price points in as many markets that are relevant as we possibly can. So, I mean, we're just going for the numbers thing here, trying to get as many ads as we possibly can posted in the correct areas that generate leads. Right. I mean, knowing Scott Todd, he just goes to process moto, presses one button, and all of a sudden it just populates ads. 
But I will ask you, Scott, is, what are you doing with your ads? Yeah, I mean, that, thanks. Yeah, it is driven by process moto. But the thing is, is that what we're doing, Mark, is a lot like what everybody else said. Okay, so we try to think of general terms. Like I, I might have um, 20 or 30 properties in one area. If I had to write one or two ads for those 20 or 30 properties every single day, then we'd never do anything, right? So the way that I approach it is I, I use the blind ad strategy where we talk about the general area. Hey, I've got land in this area. I mean, the other day I actually put an ad out that said like 39 properties in this area, send me a note. And like people are like, uh, tell me more, okay? So all I'm doing with marketing is I'm trying to shake the trees of all the land buyers out there. Who wants to buy land? And I'm just, it's like fishing, right? Like you're just throwing bait out there and then you're reeling them in, okay? We're not trying to like, you know, hook them or eat them right out of the fishing pond. We're trying to hook them first and then we'll reel them in. Okay, so that's the thing is that's what we're trying to do with our marketing. And so I don't necessarily have to write hundreds of ads a day. What I've got to do is I've got to be able to to put ads out there that's going to generate interest to, to find the people that are interested in land to raise their hand and then I can start the sales process. Absolutely, it's all about generating interest. I am shocked that Tate did not just make a sarcastic comment about the way you just casted that line. I mean, that no, form. I, look, I agree was... with everything he ex everything he said. Right? I mean, it was spot on. The cast, on the other hand, you know, obviously, I need <laughs> to come spend some time with you. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, whatever. You know. It, okay, whatever. Maybe maybe, maybe revisit a river runs through it. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're at the point now where we're going to ask Taria for her yeah. tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before we do that, I have to give out a, spon uh, a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents, and go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times as your Sherpa. The investment that you are making in flight school ain't gonna cost you nothing, because you're gonna make that money back 180 days or less, guaranteed. Most people do it in eight weeks. All you have to do is show us your work. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Taria, what do you got? Okay. So this is pretty basic and it's kind of one of the land geek staples. It's what Landon and I first heard when we got the boot camp that really just we held on to it. And it was, can you see my thing in the back? Remember your why. It's the other way, right? Remember yeah. Um, remember your why. So there were times in our business where and, and I'm still we have times where things are going really well and then things aren't going as well. So in those moments where we are frustrated or, you know, there were times where we, we really thought this is not going to work. We're going to give up. But we always went back to our why. Why did we get into this? What's the purpose of it? What do we want to get out of it? And that was our driving force. So remember your why. I, I love it. I love it. I, I can't even make a snarky comment about it. <laughs> Scott Todd can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I can. Absolutely, I can. No problem. See, look, here's a, notice what Saria just did, though. She she went to the person who she thought would would ding her on the, the thing, and then she did a she did a preemptive strike. That's right. To like you know to to like oh well he can do it, and now like if I go and do it, I'm like the mean guy that goes and does it. So I have nothing to say. My Come on, own. Scott. You know you want to do it. I'll, I'll, do, it. I'll do it a different yeah. time. I'll do it when no she's play, not Korea. expecting it. I will do it when yeah. she's not expecting it. But you know who will do it? Eric Peterson. <laughs> no way. The, Eric. The, the irascible Eric Peterson? I mean, he's just looking for revenge for the Jot Not Pro whole deal. Like, you know. It's all good. Oh, he must, yeah. he must have just, a ribbon in his I, mouth then, according to Mark. I'm just happy to, to not do the week. Whoa. Whoa. That was a, I, I, wow. 
for I don't think I've, I've, I've ever Eric. seen. I don't think I've ever seen Scott go after Eric ever. <laughs> he couldn't come after me, so he well, he diverted. I had to lash out at somebody. <laughs> like no one ever lashes out at Eric except for you. So you know. I, I tell you, I mean, Taria is a tremendous influence now on this roundtable. You get, I mean, you, you can just see all the changes happening in the flow. The balance of dynamic, isn't it? It is. It's yes. yeah. Listen, it's who who wants to mess with her, man? Like, <laughs> he doesn't eat for twenty one days. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. I'm out. She yeah, might be Zane, hungry. And Zane, and I, Zane and I were just talking about that. Actually, we're what like I just bought a case of bone broth. I'm ready. Oh, okay. With a mini fast. A mini fast. Always. Bone mini broth. fast. Good yeah. for you. But the bone broth. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get to our little bonus content, I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way that we're going to be able to get Taria to preemptively strike Scott Todd <laughs> is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at thelanggeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. So please do it. It really helps us out. Even if you don't want the course, do it. It just helps us. It's just a nice thing to do. It could be like your, your, your good deed of the day. So check that box off. Um, Scott Bossman, are we good? We're good. All right. Eric, we're good? Sir. Tate? Yep. Very Tria? Good. All good. Mike? Yes, all set. Scott? All, all set. All right. One, <laughs> two, three. Let's let let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Not bad. I thought this is this a fun podcast discussion. We got, we got two questions in. It was kind of tough, though, because I started feeling like I had to look at everybody's reactions. And then I started, I don't know, it's kind of throwing me off my game, looking at everybody's React. I wasn't laughing at you, Scott. I was just sort of caught up in the moment. Okay. All right. No, not you, Scott. The other <laughs> no, Scott. Wait, wait. wait. Scott. Scott Bossman, not Scott Todd. Jeez. Mark Why gave me the weird expression. Oh, okay. Mark gave me the, uh, like, uh, Mark gave me the, really? Really? The what? You, you're going to call him a manager? Zane really? was laughing at me. When you said manager, Tate and Eric just heard cha-ching, like this no. whole word manager. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're like, boy, that overhead. What is he? What's he got uh, going on here? This big organization. He's got a marketing manager. He's got an intake cool. manager. You throw you out that cool title and all of a sudden your, your Upwork applicants are asking for $50 an hour. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. I should have used, again, should have used a different term. Yeah. Spe speaking of Upwork, like... Do you guys have a favorite platform now to find talent? Is Upwork still the best place to go? I think so. I like the easiest. It. Yeah. Is it yeah. easiest? Yeah. It's pretty they'd good. Just make their, if they'd make their interface a little bit more user-friendly, I'd be thrilled with yeah. it. Yeah. I hate that, but I, I like Upwork. Okay. All right. Um, did anybody watch Lupin over the weekend? What? On Netflix, Lupin. It's a French. It's French with subtitles. Right. No, highly recommend. Lupin. The guy, the the people that made Now You See Me, movies made Lupin. Mm. Oh, like L U P I N. And it's like easily digestible. It's not like real long. It's like a. It's like British. Like I love those little British series, with like six episodes, and you're like done with the season. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Scott Todd's giving me this this weird look. What's what's on your mind, Scott? Yeah, not the mind. I will reserve. See, you did the same thing as Rita just did. You, you're looking, you're looking, you're preempting the strike. I, I got nothing. Uh, all right. Did, you, did anybody watch your White Tiger? Nope. Not yet. No. Look at look at Zeno. He's such a he's such a an intellectual elitist now. He's like, Mark, I'm I'm reading. No time <laughs> for Netflix. It's fine. I re I'm not like I'm not reading my books either. I'm still reading, but 
at night, I do like. Oh, I like. The show. I, I'm going to watch Lupin tonight. I've been looking Cobra Kai. I just finished third season of that, which is very addictive. Season three, if you guys haven't seen it, but uh, I'm looking for a new show. So uh, Lupin, it is. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one on Netflix that we watched last night. It's called Dig. I watched it last night. That's crazy. That was awesome. Wasn't that yeah. good? Yeah. Very good. That was fantastic. What's so fantastic about it? Why is it so great? Great story. It's a great... You, just go watch it. I mean, it's a, It's like an archaeologist uh, dig movie about... Uh... Uh, I just fell asleep when you said archaeologist. <laughs> no, it's exciting. <laughs> It's fantastic. Watch it like, and uh, you'll see. Indiana it's, Jones? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. There you go. Indiana Jones? Sort of. Kind of. Sorry, I'm distracted. Somebody's sending me inappropriate images right now. Oh. God, uh oh. I, I, Whoa. I, will admit, I will admit it. I, I, I just dropped the bomb on tape. And I did it at the most strategic time. You know, Thanks He's to red. Scott Bossman stirring the pot <laughs> yesterday. I got this very appropriate <laughs> picture to drop right on tape to where he just lost, lost it. He couldn't even contain his face is all red. I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, I got to go, guys. I know what picture that was. <laughs> God, that was rude and uncalled for. I I've never seen Tate's face get this red. He's so red. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny as I was watching Tate's reaction to the thing, to the first picture. He he saw it, he chuckled right as he kept talking. And then Mike Zano's like, What? What? Mike Zano picked up on a difference in Tate, and then I had to drop the other two bombs on him right at the right moment. Oh man. Eric's like, what is this? Don't worry, Eric. I'll get No, I know what it is. Oh, Anyways, uh, yeah, go watch that movie. It's fantastic. I don't even dig. I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> Although um, I know what Scott Todd would like. It's called Fear City. Have you seen that? Fear City. Fear City. It's all about the FBI and the mafia, and it has the actual tapes that they listen in on the mafia leaders when they when they it shows how they taped that way back in the day. It's a whole story of they took down the mob. It's a really good Netflix show. Fear City. Hey, I have been enjoying the, that show, The Sopranos, man. I'm a little late to the party, but definitely, definitely enjoying the show. Hmm. And um, got some good ideas, too. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> oh. Good. I, I think on that, we're going to end. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.